Hi guys, uh, this is Ashish. Uh, I'm a senior developer advocate from Elastic. Welcome to the meetup. And uh, yeah, so we are going to start the session. So uh, uh, so you can you you guys can we have running a multiple Elastic user group for the different cities. You can join. It may be uh, you can just just get connect with the community. Like we have a Slack workspace and uh, the YouTube community where we used to upload our video. Uh, it, it might be a meetup video or conferences. And of course, we having a APAC virtual user group as well. You can join and you can just get update about the, our upcoming meetups and the newsletter and the resources we are used to share. So yes, uh, we having a technical forum as well. Uh, the official forum is a discuss.elastic.co. You can ask any query, any doubts over there. And there is an expertise who are happy to help you, happy to assist you with your any query, any doubts. So uh, there is a contributor program as well. Uh, you can contribute into the Elastic stack in, uh, you want to contribute in uh, any stack. Uh, you want to contribute, you want to just answer on the stack or question or any forums, just feel free to contribute and just submit on this link so that Elastic can validate and it, and it can be rewarded. So yes, we, we are happy to onboard the contributors. Cool. We also having the free cloud trial. You can just go on this link, Elastic Search Service Trial Meetups and just start with your free trial where you can spin your Elastic Search instances with a few clicks and magically it will start spinning and it's it up. So with the beautiful dashboard of the Kibana and everything. So you can directly use that Elasticsearch cloud. And uh, yes, you can start leveraging those. I would like to welcome David for this meetup. He's going to present on the Elastic Percolation to match something a new real state listing uh, on the safe search. David is a principal developer and uh, from the REA group. So I would not take much time. David, over to you so that you can start with a screen. Over to you, David. Great. Thank, thank you, Ashish. That's, uh, uh, okay. So, yes, as, as she said, I'm David Kemp. Um, I'm principal developer at REA Group. I'm part of a team that, um, oh, REA Group, probably, if you've never heard of it, you possibly have heard of um, realestate.com.au. Um, very popular website and native apps for um, searching for real estate listings. Enormous numbers of people use it. And yeah, I've been at REA for a bit over seven years now, and I'm part of the team that's responsible for the main search backend. So whenever you do a search for, say, um, you know, Turac, listings in Turac with two bedrooms and three bathrooms, um, that eventually comes through to uh, our elast the Elastic Search cluster that we're we're managing in our team and via APIs that we've we've developed um, to find listings that match. Um, now, the although today what I'm going to be talking about is not so much about the actual main search stack, but about the safe searches, but I'll get onto that in a moment. Um, let me just re recap for the, though, if you haven't been to our site for a while, this might be slightly unfamiliar because it's had a bit of a facelift. This is um, how you would normally do a search. So, you, you know, you put in a location, um, you select whether you're looking to buy or rent or just looking for things that have sold um, and you do a search. Uh, although actually typically you also set some filters. So um, you might say what type of property you're looking for, if you, you know, just looking for um, apartments and units or land, minimum and maximum price, bedrooms, even keywords. I can't see it here, but you can specify some keywords that'll match against the description and the title and, and various property features as well. Um, and the key thing for this talk is that uh, we also let you then save a search. So any search you do, you can save it. Um, and that then lets you come back to the search later that you've done previously and replay the search. But it also then by default, once you've saved a search, unless you untick this box, once you've saved a search, you'll get daily notifications of any new listings that match the, the search that you saved. Um, so once a day, you'll get emails that look a little bit like this, um, that list, you know, has up to 20 uh, new listings that match your safe search. Uh, you can also get 
push notifications to your phone. Again, it'll be just once a day that come out to your phone with telling you about the um, all the, the new listings that match your um, that match your your safe searches. Um, just a few numbers. The um, there's more than actually the last time I looked, I think it's more like 8.6 million safe searches. So there's more than eight and a half million uh, safe searches in our system. Um, four and a half million of those, or a bit over four and a half million, actually have notifications enabled. Um, in reality, though, although there's four and a half million enabled, users are able to do like unsubscribes to all of REA um, emails. And so in reality, there's it's about only about half of those notifications actually end up resulting in, in alerts going out. Um, unfortunately, our system isn't integrated with that. So it's like um, we generate all these notifications, half of which then get blocked at, at a layer above us. But it's um, uh, we, at some day we may actually look at optimizing that. Um, agents are constantly creating new listings that we get 700 new listings per hour at the peak of the day. Um, in the middle of the night, there's nothing like we, sometimes you go for a couple of hours where no one's created a listing, but certainly during the day at the peak of the day on a weekday, we, we get, you know, you know, six or 700 new listings being created per hour. Um, so it's thousands of new listings per day. From that, we get um, more than 1.4 million notifications actually sent out. But as I said before, it's act in reality, we generate more than 2 million notifications a day. It's just that because of global level blocks, it's, it's reduced to about 1.4 million. Um, so these are typical weekdays on, on weekends on and on um, public holidays. It's a little less because there's less uh, listings being created. Um, actually, before, so before I go into the detail of what percolation is and how we're using it, um, I just want, thought I'd first talk a little bit, of, think about how you would, different ways you could implement this, uh, something like the save search alert matching. So um, you could, we could, once a day at four o'clock every day, uh, let me go back a slide because it was, yeah, those four and a half million safe searches that are enabled, we could execute the four and a half million safe searches at four o'clock each day. Um, because, and, and generally we want to try and get them all sent out within two to four hours. Um, so even if it was four hours, that's to send, to execute four and a half million safe searches in four hours, um, we'd have to execute about 20,000 um, searches per minute, which is feasible. It's about like at about this time of day, we're already doing, having to support about 20,000 or, or more safe searches, uh, not safe, 20,000 or more searches per minute at this time of the day already. Um, like our system does get an awful lot of traffic, but so we'd be more than doubling the load on our systems if we come four o'clock every day, we had to execute all these safe searches. So we, we're a little reluctant to do it that way. The other reason why we're a little reluctant to do it that way is um, we want to give people the option to uh, eventually, it's not coming out yet, but eventually to be able to indicate that um, they want to get notified within an hour of a listing coming on online or even within five minutes of a listing becoming available. Um, and if a lot of people take that up, then we'll be constantly executing you know, thousands, potentially a million searches every few minutes, which we just, which would just be unfeasible. Um, so what's another way we could do it? Another way would be the way that we currently do it. Oh, I should actually mention that the, the percolation, the system using percolation isn't actually going live until next week. It's like, it'd be nice if I delayed this talk by a week and I could be saying this is actually live now, but it's going live next week and we're rolling out with like about, I think it's initially 5% of users and then ramping it up over the next few weeks. But the existing system that we're replacing, what it does is when you save a search, we index all your different search terms. So, you know, you say one, 
at least one bedroom and at least and maximum of five bedrooms or you know minimum of three bathrooms so all those various search terms are explicitly indexed and then when a new listing comes in um, every time a new listing comes in and you know we're getting a dozen of those per minute so every time a new listing comes in um, that system is searching all those safe searches and it's having to construct a, a search based on the listing so if the listing's got say three bedrooms the search is going to be find me all the safe searches for which if it has a bedroom filter in that search so if it doesn't have a filter it immediately matches depending if all the other things match it, on the on the bedrooms if it has a minimum bedroom filter then that minimum bedroom had filter better be less than or equal to three if my listing has three bedrooms if it's got a maximum then that maximum had better be greater than um or equal to three um and so we the the old system has all has to construct and explicitly construct a query across all the various features of the listing and every time there's a new um a, a new filter that we support at the front end we have to make changes to our safe search match system to understand how to match a new listing against any queries that are using that new filter um, it also means we've had to duplicate a fair amount of business logic so there's business logic like if your if your query if your search is saying i want units and apartments um, that matches all sorts of different things including like if the uh, listing is a flat like there's various tick boxes that the agent can tick and one of them is what type of property it is um, and there's the the various business logic around what type of um, property type filter matches what types of properties on on the listings isn't obvious and there's um so there's business logic that's had to be replicated in the matching as well as um in the act that replicates the, the logics that's in the actual search um there's you know various bits of logic like when we're matching keywords we're having to match um we do a bit of synonym matching so that you could match on um air conditioning will also match air con and ac and various sorts of um synonyms like that uh the old system can't even cope with keywords if you think about it, it's actually not that easy if you've got a listing that has a description what sort of query do i make that says find me all the things that all those safe searches where all of their combinations of keyword phrases match this description it's actually at first, it seems like a pretty simple thing that you, to do, but if you work through it, it's actually not that trivial. Um, so the third option, which is the one that we've gone with in our new system, is to use the percolation feature of Elasticsearch. Um, so when you're to, to understand percolation, firstly, think about how you normally use Elasticsearch. Normally in Elasticsearch, you store JSON documents in Elasticsearch. And then you use um, queries to find those matching JSON documents. In Elasticsearch, but when you're doing percolation, it's the opposite. Um, so it's quite weird. Instead of storing documents, you're storing queries. Well, actually, you're storing queries inside documents, but effectively, you're storing queries in Elasticsearch. Um, and then instead of using a query, you're using a document to find all the matching safe searches and again it's actually you are using a query but inside that query you've got the document that you use to find all the safe searches so that in our case the document's going to be the listing um, and so every time a new listing comes through our system we'll do this we'll treat that listing as a document and say find all the safe searches that match this document that's actually a listing uh, so i have got to keep an eye on time. So a, a little bit of the nitty gritty detail. Hopefully, um, I'm hoping people who are watching this are um, familiar to some degree with the, uh, the Elasticsearch REST API and the, um, the query DSL and the, the, you know, the, the DSL for creating indexes. But this, if, if you haven't seen, seen it before, this is what it looks like for creating an index. Um, so imagine, 
your initially all you want to do is a, an index in which you're going to save listings. So this will be, I mean, this is a bit of a simplification for, for our case, but we have something that looks a bit like this to create the list, the index in which we store all our listings. So you say put, because it's a put operation. Um, I think under the covers, it actually ends up being a post, but anyway, it's a put operation. You specify the, the index being listings, and then you give it a mapping. Um, and here, I've, just for simplification, let's pretend listings just have a description, a suburb, and a number of bedrooms. Notice I've specified for the description, I'm going to use the English analyzer. We actually use a bit of a custom analyzer that uses some of the English um, the stemming and a few other things, plus we've added synonyms and a few things like that. Anyway, and then this is how you go about inserting documents into an index. So this is here, I'm uh, again, it's a put operation um, on the listings index, the operation is the underscore doc, give it a, 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 um, uh, a number that, so it's listing number 1000. And so this is a listing in Coburg. So it's a Coburg listing with one bedroom and a nice description. And then when you do a search, so this is what a search would look like. Um, and so, you know, we get thousands of searches per minute um, at the peak of the day. And under the covers, the API is having to transform. So we get like a, a search in a um, particular format that we call the, the um, listings uh, service query format um, that we then transform into this elastic search uh, format. Uh, query format. So here it's just a simple filter where I'm looking for all of the listings that are in Coburg with the bedrooms being between one and three. So it must have at least one bedroom and at, at most three bedrooms. And somewhere in the description, I want the words, the phrase swimming pool. And that would presumably we'll come back with, well, I'm not sure how many places in swimming pool have, how many places in Coburg have swimming pools, but yeah, they'll presumably come back with a, a bunch of listings. So that's how you do normal searches, but how do we do save searches? Uh, we save, we put all our save searches in a different index. So we don't, um, there's various reasons, partly performance, reasons that you're better off keeping your safe searches in a different index to where you actually save your um, normal documents. Um, so this is what, it, I mean, it's slightly different, but this is roughly what our index looks like for our safe searches. Um, we include the ID of the user that owns the safe search. So when I, you know, creating my search for uh, two bedroom apartments in Brunswick, it, I, that gets put in this index and the user ID will be my user ID, the name that I've given it. Every, um, and then the special field, uh, this query field. Actually, we normally wouldn't, act, we don't actually declare the user ID in safe search name um, because we don't actually search and sort on them. We store those fields, but we don't actually map them. I've just included them here for completeness. But the, the, the interesting one is that third field, the percolation, percolator field that the type so Elasticsearch has a special type called percolator and it's in this field that you can store a normal query and we'll see an example of that in a moment but first there's more to this I can't just have these fields for every field that is used by the queries I have to also declare the mappings um, of the fields to which that query refers. Now, this is really annoying. Um, it's just a just one of the things you have to live with when you're using Percolator. It means that description, suburb, and bedrooms, and all the other fields that are in a listing, I have to duplicate all those mappings. So remember, a couple of slides ago, I created the index in which to store the listings. Um, because the queries is re are going to refer to all those fields, I have to duplicate all that mapping in the save search index. Um, to achieve that in our, in our systems, we've got the, um, the index, the, the mappings for the listings index is actually, um, we export that into a, um, 
in, as a library and into an internal repository. And then our safe search system grabs the latest library with all those mappings and uses that when it creates a safe search index. Um, what, what would be perhaps nice is to be able to say, when, when you declare the, the percolator field to perhaps, perhaps say, um, it's going to refer to, to be able to say refer to another index instead of having to duplicate all the, the mapping here to say, just use all the mappings in some other index. But um, anyway, it is what it is. Um, so when I save a query, so this is what happens when you have, what a, um, a save search ends up looking like when you actually save the query. So um, again, it's put operation on this index. I include the user ID. So user ID 1234 is the owner of this safe search that called it my Coburg search. And then in the query field, you literally put the, the actual elastic search query um, that, that was used for the actual listing search. Um, so when this, when, when you execute this, when you actually save the search, it doesn't execute the query. It just saves the query. But a whole heap of smarts going on. At the, I'm not sure how much is being done in the underlying Lucene and how much Elastic have actually put on top of that to support this. But there's a lot of smarts going on where the various terms in the these in this query are actually indexed um, for efficiency reasons. Uh, and yeah, basically you can put arbitrary. Well, actually you can't put arbitrary. There's some limitations to the sorts of queries you can put in here. Like I don't think the query can have be a parent child um, join query. Um, there's one or two other minor limitations you need to, to watch out for. But for our purposes, it actually works really well for the, the queries we do. Now, the, the final step, actually percolating a document. So this is what we do for every single new listing that gets comes through our system. So say a real estate agent has just created a, a brand new listing that's in Coburg. It's got two bedrooms and the description they've given it is large garden and heated swimming pool. Then what we do is we need to do a search. We need to find all of the safe searches that match this listing. And so it's just a normal search operation, except the query we use is, is not, is, is a percolate query. Um, and when you do, use, do a percolate query, you specify the, the field that contains the, um, the actual queries and you specify as a document, you specify the document you want to use for, for the percolation. So here it's the, the document representing the listing. Um, so let me go through the architecture and hopefully if, if, if some of that didn't make sense, hopefully it might make a little bit more sense as we go through the architecture and eventually I can take questions towards the end um, and possibly even demonstrate some of it a bit more. Am I doing for time? So um, this is our listing search pipeline, very, very simplified. Uh, so there's, I haven't shown anything about safe searches yet. On the Right hand side, I hope you can sort of see my mouse cursor. I'm not quite sure what you can see through the, the zoom with the um, PowerPoint slides. But anyway, I'm assuming you can see my mouse cursor. Um, actually, I wonder if I do annotations, that might be even safer. Um, just draw. So, um, so over here, you've got the real estate agent um, and the they're entering listing information through, I've called it the listing management system. It's actually, a this represents a bunch of different layers of systems that eventually put listing data into our listings database, which is a, I think it's a MySQL database. Anyway, it's some sort of relational database system. Um, and then from there, we have what, we, what I've Represent, I've called here the listings feed pipeline, which again is multiple layers of different systems talking to each other that eventually um, pretty much duplicates all the information about the listings that are currently um, for sale or, or rent in our Elasticsearch index. Um, and then on the, on the left-hand side, um, 
over here we've got our health hunter um i've sort of left out all the bits here like you know you actually of course they interact with a web browser or a native you know a phone application that in turn talks to an extra various layers this search api again it's actually represents a couple of different layers we've got a graphql system that um uh fetches information about not just listings but oh what's happening to my mouse sorry i've just lost my mouse um here we go yeah it so this system um doesn't just fetch listings it also combines uh the listings with other information about agencies and stuff but that's a bit of extra detail the the main thing that um i wanted to just point out there is that yeah when the house hunter makes a search it goes through this search api which the what the search api takes as input is um what we call the uh, listing services query format and if, which is like a JSON representation of the, the search. And this is a fairly key thing. It translates that into the Elasticsearch query that's then performed on Elasticsearch. So we'll come back to why that's important in a moment, because that's got a lot of the business logic around how the search gets trans, you know, how to translate a search into an Elasticsearch query. So what about saving a search? My keyboard's not working anymore either. Um, sorry, I've lost control. Oh, I need to stop doing the annotation thing. That's what it is. Okay. Whoops. Too many slides. Okay. So uh, what happens when a user saves a search? So there's a save search API here, um, which, so when you save a search, the front ends, instead of talking to the search API, they talk to the save search API. Um, again, it's the listing query format comes through here, goes into another relational database system. And so when the user then wants to come back and repeat the search, it fetches the search from the, um, the save search database via an API, via that same API that was used to save it. However, we need to get all the safe searches out of this, well, all the safe searches that are in this relational database, we need to keep that in sync with an elastic search index. So that's this next step here. Um, so here I've still got the safe search database over here and on down in the, the bottom here is um, the, so down here is my actual elastic search. Um, and to, to actually get from one spot to the other, we've got um, over here, we've got a connection between the safe search database and a Kafka topic. We use something called Debezium. So Kafka is just a, a big messaging system. Um, and basically anytime there's updates, creations or updates or deletions to safe searches, it ends up going through this Kafka topic. So this big bus, message bus where there's events flowing through. Um, that's just disappeared again. Sorry. Um, and now, say, so here we've got a safe search feeder. So this is the thing responsible for in, indexing safe searches into our elastic search index. So every time it gets a new safe search um, or an updated one, it needs to translate the listing query format that we've got, sorry, the search format into an elastic search query that then gets stored in the Elasticsearch index. And we want to use exactly the same query that's used for normal searches. We want to store in the Elasticsearch index exactly the same Elasticsearch query that a normal listing search would do, which is why we've got this, this strange looking um, call here up to the search API. Um, so if every time we get a, a new save search, we call the search API and say, translate, this search into don't perform the search translate the search into the elastic search query that you use and i'm going to and i'll store that in this elastic search index um, so as you can see this is a rather big tight coupling that's going on here i'll, I'll talk a bit about that later it's one of those trade-offs that we've had to make um, 
So that's how we get the, elast the safe searches into our Elasticsearch index. The next thing we need to do is actually then percolate. Every time a new listing is created, we need to search the Elasticsearch index for all the safe searches that match it. So that is the next step. Whoops. Here. So um, we've got some. another endpoint there that you could use and, and paginate um, through, through, it can say, give me all the listings that have been created since particular date. And it just paginates through um, keeping track of where it's up to based on the date. It's uh, the last date of the last listing. Um, now, why does it why doesn't it actually, one thing you could ask is why doesn't it just get it directly from the listing management system or somewhere from the pipeline here? Partly, we do want to use exactly the same document that uh, exactly the same representation of the listing that's in the Elasticsearch index. It has to be perfectly compatible with the query that we're storing. And because we're getting the query from the search API, it sort of makes sense that we also get the actual listing documents from there. Because that way we know that they're perfectly compatible, that the, the, the structure of the document matches what the queries are expecting. Um, so it grabs those listings, all the new lists get, so to think of it as like a paginated feed of new listings from the search API for each new listing, it then does a percolate query to find all the um, safe searches that match. And for every single match, we store a record in a relational database. Because remember, we don't want to send out the notifications straight away. We want to collate them all at the end of the day and um, have, you know, at four o'clock, we send out for each user's safe search, we want to send a single email with all the matches in it. We don't want to sort of send out matches throughout the day. Eventually that might be an option for users that want that, but at the moment it's throughout the day. So that's why we just, instead of sending them off straight away, we, we store them in, in this match store. Uh, then the next step after that, come four o'clock um, every day, our safe search notifier kicks up, uh, fires up, fetches all the safe searches, um, all the sorry, all the all the matches, um, collates them because it's like we need to group them all by safe search, uh, sorts them because there's um, there's some sorting rules that need to be in there so that they're basically the same sorting rules that are used when you do a normal search, and and truncate them because we don't want to send more than twenty matches per safe search because um, same any like people who are doing like statewide or Australia wide safe searches can get many thousands of matches every day when, and we're not going to put them all in an email we we'll just take the first 20 and send them off as a notification and then this notification system um is actually uh this is a system that then sends off an email it also does a push notification to the phone it also puts it into your inbox in your rea account if you've you know, you, to, to do all this, you actually have to log into um, your uh, real estate comau account. Um, and with that, you get a little inbox where we put the notifications as well. Uh, this layer is also the layer that does a final um, uh, blocking of, of notifications for uh, if the user is elected to opt out of all communication from REA. Um, so a few more numbers. At peak hours, um, as I said earlier, we get more than 700 new listings per hour. And each one of those listings we're percolating, we're doing, so every time we get a new listing, we do a search, a percolation search against the four and a half million enabled safe searches. Um, so we're doing um, at peak loads, it's, it's more than like 10 searches a minute against the four and a half million safe searches. Um, which results in uh, more than 100, you know, typically at the peak of the day, we're looking at more than 140,000 matches a minute being generated and having to be stored in our match store. 
Um, to do this, actually, we ended up with a relatively, well, for us, a, a relatively large Elasticsearch cluster. It's not as big as the, um, I think it's about half the size of our actual normal listings search cluster, but it's still a, a fairly um, powerful cluster, Elasticsearch cluster that we've had to um, use for this. Um, and yeah, so come 4 p.m., there's typically two and a half million notifications that are triggered and also all those matches have to be collated. It's actually quite a complicated uh, SQL query that we've had to do to do this efficiently. Um, in the end of those two and a half million, that that's actually only 1.4 million actually go out the door because people have switched off, um, you know, at a layer above that, that they've want to disable all notifications from REA. Uh, someday we'll actually get that through to our system so we don't have to generate so many notifications to start with. Um, and we want all this to happen within about four hours. It's, uh, the, as I said, we're not quite live yet, but when we were doing the performance testing, it looked like we should be able to get it all done through it all within a couple of hours. Um, so, one of the, I think it's like one of the, one of the somewhere I was reading. It's like someone's coined the first law of um, of architecture is everything's a trade off, and of course there are trade offs with this. So, one of the really nice things, and that the reason we went with this approach is, um, or one of the several reasons we went with this approach is the search that's performed um, to do the percolation. All those safe searches are exactly the same elastic search queries, and so it's exactly the same searches the exact same business logic that's used for a normal search when the user is actually searching listings um, which means that unlike the existing system the like the existing system the actual business logic is actually diverged in some some areas some the the safe search matches that you're currently getting in the, the existing system don't necessarily match exactly what you'd normally do we don't actually support all the filters because every time a new filters supported in the front end we've had to re-implement that business logic in the safe search matching system whereas with the new way with percolation all we have to do is make sure that the mappings the elastic search mappings are the same um, and as i said we've got this system where the the mappings are contained in a library that's then used for both and we just have to keep those in sync so it's a lot less overhead to support a new a new filter whenever a new filter is to be supported the downside, um, as you can see with that diagram, it's we've got some crazy coupling. Um, say if we if we were to uh, rename a field in our Elasticsearch documents, we then have this crazy dance where sure you you can't just remove the the old mapping for the field. You have to keep the old and the new, do a refeed of all the queries before you get rid of the old. So you end up with a sort of crazy coupling between the systems, which is a bit unfortunate. And we possibly could have, if we were doing this again, completely from scratch, we, 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 there's other ways perhaps we could consider architecting it so that um, the things that are really strongly coupled perhaps should be the one system. But um, we'll, we'll see how we go with this. Um, let me just stop here for a second. Um, I can see there's a question. How about a look at what cluster size and configuration? Yeah, so as, as, I, as I mentioned, we've got, um, what did I say it was? It's something like seven uh, T3 large instances. We actually don't need that many. There was, um, uh, there was, Turned out we um, we had a whole bunch of safe searches that we didn't need, and it's we are actually I think at the moment we could probably get away with only five, but we've left it at seven because if we fall behind, say if our, our matcher goes down for an hour or two, um, it then would struggle to to catch up. So we're we're setting it at seven, um, and possibly actually I'd even like to look at some auto scaling so that if we do fall behind, it automatically scales up and then during the night it could scale down again, but we haven't, we haven't done that. Any other questions? Before I, I might just give a quick demo of 
I won't do the full demo because it's getting late. But I'll give you the quick demo of, um, just thought I'd show it in action. I'm hoping people who are attending this can um, have, have, this is the dev tools uh, thing in Kibana. Um, hopefully most of you have seen this. Um, it allows you to, to try out the um, Elasticsearch uh, just via the REST, REST API. So I've got Elasticsearch running locally. Um, so this is the thing you saw on the slide. I'm creating an index here, which has the description suburban bedrooms for, for the listings. Um, and it just comes back saying it's true. And it's complaining that I've switched off security features. <laughs> we ignore that. Um, and then I'm putting in um, an example listing. So here's my example, Coburg, one bedroom up above ground swimming pool, spacious kitchen. And comes back with success. So I've just inserted a listing. And then here's a search. So this is, again, I think this is pretty much what I had in the, in the slide. This is a search for, um, so imagine I've, you know, I could have put in our example, with in our um, case, I can't remember how many listings we have live at the moment. It's, I don't know, one or 200,000 listings um, that are for sale or rent across Australia at the moment. Um, if I do a, and then, a search then is searching across all those listings. So this is finding all the Coburg listings with the, between one and three bedrooms and swim pool. And because I used the English analyzer, swim pool should match swimming pool. And, and sure enough, it does. So it's matched that document that I stored there. So this is just normal searches. This is not percolation. This is just normal searches. To support percolation, I need to create an index that has the query type of percolator. Um, as I sort of mentioned, I don't really need to map these other two fields like because I'm not going to search or sort on them. I'm just going to store them. But anyway, I've got them there. So the user ID, the save search name and the query. And unfortunately, I've had to repeat those three fields. So those three fields are the description suburb and um, bedrooms are the same exact copy of the, the mappings that are, that are there. And so we've had to do a bit of work to make sure that these are kept in sync. And the reason I do that is any fields that are referred to by the query have to be mapped in the same index mapping. Um, and as I said, it'd be, wouldn't it be nice if I could just say something like, you know, use index mapping from something, you know, equals listings or something. Um, that, that would have been nice, but yeah, I can't do that. I actually have to repeat the mappings. Um, Okay, so I've just created my safe search and index. Um, and then here's an example safe search. So my the safe search, it's my Coburg search, searching on Coburg with a bedroom range between one and three and swim pool. And let's save another one. So this is a Brunswick search. Oh, same user, that's all right. Same user ID, different. Um, safe search ID, it's the same user's brunt, but that's a Brunswick search. Um, so searching in Brunswick, same filters on the swimming pool and the phrase. Um, so I've now got two safe searches in there. And now the real estate agent comes along and creates a new listing. They've just created, someone's just decided to put a house in Coburg uh, for sale. It's um, Coburg, two bedrooms, and it's got a large garden and a swimming pool. So at this point, our matching system will decide, right, I now need to percolate that document using a search and the percolate query. And sure enough, it comes back and says, yep, the My Coburg search is the one that matched. It includes the, and it includes the query there that you actually made. But the, the key thing is that, yeah, the My Coburg search matched. I'll grab the, um, the ID for that. So it's the ID of one, which was this one. And then our system stores that in a match store. Um, we capture, we actually capture some of the information like the search name and the user ID. Um, so that, because we need to pass that on to the notification system. Um, 
I might finish there because it's getting on and the next bit gets complicated because I was going to talk about how we do with um, when users, um, when you make a search, you can, um, one of the things you might have noticed is you can, uh, one of the filters that you can switch on and off um, is whether or not to include surrounding suburbs. Actually, it doesn't make sense for Bendigo Greater Engine, but say for Coburg, you, you might say, I want to include surrounding suburbs. And their exact matches always get ranked above the surrounding matches. Um, and to do that, we use a function score query so that the um, exact matches get a higher score than the surrounding matches. Um, and you can, that if you, because that function score query is just part of the actual Elasticsearch query that um, that ends up in the save search query, uh, the percolation by default will include the scores that you would have got from a normal search. And so we've been able to make use of that to, to do the ranking because when we email you, here are all the listings that match your save search since the last notification, we have those ranked again so that the exact matches come first and then the surrounding matches afterwards. But uh, it's getting late and trying to show that in code gets a little complicated. So I think that's it for me. Um, unless there's some more questions. Oh, and by the way, I should say we're hiring. We need more. <laughs> I think I'm allowed to say that. Um, yeah, we definitely need, need people where uh, I'm, I'm sure like everyone in the world at the moment, we're short of staff and we're doing, re as you can see, we're doing really interesting work. So yeah, come and ping me if you're, if you're looking well, or just go to our careers page on our site. Cool, cool. Uh, thanks, Ravid, for a wonderful session. I think uh, it was a uh, very depth of a percolation. Uh, yeah. And uh, I think we have one more question. Yep. If uh, Elastic search query have to change maybe from a business logic, do you have to edit all the previous data in a percolate field? Uh, David, I think you are mute. You are I'm mute. muted, yes. Yeah. <laughs> One of the most common phrases the last two years. Um, let me just share the screen again. But yeah, um, sure. it, yeah, unfortunately, that, that, that is a, one of the side effects. So um, when, um, yeah, if, if the business, sorry, the query again was if the business logic changes. Yeah, so if, this, if the search changes, um, then we have to be really careful that it's um, that it's not a breaking change. We have to be, you know, how, how we do things. Um, and you end up having to trigger a refeed. So in our architecture, we actually, um, the way we've architected it is um, if we want to do a refeed, it's actually turned out to be easiest. It seems a bit, a bit over the top, but... Um, we end up deploying a whole new elastic search cluster and um, and then effectively a new feeder to feed the cluster and the feeder connects to the Kafka topic. And in the Kafka topic, we've got um, indefinite persistence um, because there's sort of a limit to the total number of safe searches and we've got log compaction that it deletes, um, get compacted, um, and eventually deleted. And so we, um, with the log compaction, it sort of means that generally uh, you may see some old versions of the safe searches, but they're eventually uh, uh, purged away. So it does mean that we can um, do a full refeed of all the safe searches within a few hours. Um, but it is a bit of an unfortunate approach to this. Like if, if all we did was instead just hit the search API at four o'clock with all the safe searches, we wouldn't have to worry so much about that. But um, but yeah, if we, we change the query. So it's one of the things we have to be really careful with that the, um, if we change the query to use say a new field, it could break the existing one. So if, if we add a new field, we've got to make sure that we add the field even to the existing index before any new safe searches use it. Or um, 
otherwise make sure that we've got a new index with a new field and that we've we start, you know, we've switched over to that new index before we start using the new field. Because um, the percolation um, query certainly doesn't like it. Actually, no, when you save, yeah, when you save a safe search, it'll fail if the query refers to any field that's not been mapped in your index. Um, so yeah, it's a good question. I hope ooh, I ooh. answered it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, we have a one more. Uh... Do you incrementally load queries as they come or are you doing a full periodic reload? Uh, yeah, we're um, basically as they come. So within, um, you know, basically within a minute or so of them arriving in the safe search um, database. So as soon as you've saved it, the, the queries are saved in, in the Elasticsearch index. Um, we're just using, so as I said, yeah, we've got this Kafka topic. We're using Flink running on KDA to, to do this enrichment. And then we're just saving them one at a time. Flink does a bat, actually Flink then batches them up for us, um, uh, which was quite nice not having to write any of that code. Um, I'm not sure if that was the intention of the, the question there, but hopefully that's, that helps. Okay. Yep, yep, cool. Uh, okay, and any other question, guys? Please go ahead. Cool, I think uh, we don't have any questions. Uh, quite a few more people than when we started. <laughs> <laughs> cool, I think, yeah, David, it was a wonderful session. Uh, it was uh, too depth. Uh, I think a very good use case you have uh, chosen. Uh, I think it is, it is something applicable, like, you know, in, in the e-commerce side when some stock is empty and then uh, uh, they used to say, just uh, we will notify when such kind of the category or such kind of the product is again available. So uh, just one question from my side, uh, how frequently you uh, run the, your notifier, like uh, for the notifications? Ah, yeah, I, I sort of fudged over that a bit because the, the safe search matcher actually, every time we store the match, we store mm -hmm. the time at which we want the notifications to be sent. Because as I mentioned, we sort of want eventually to support users being able to have more frequent or less frequent, like if you only be want to be notified mm -hmm. weekly, to actually okay. store the time at which to be notified. So the notifier actually, I think it kicks off every minute and says, uh, is there anything to be processed every minute? But at the moment, everything is set to be notified at four o'clock. So most of the time it kicks off and says, oh, nothing to be notified, nothing to be notified. Mm -hmm. And then at four o'clock it goes, oh my God, there's 10, several tens of millions of matches I've got to go and collate and, and, yeah. and put together and um, send off a whole, you know. It, so yeah, at the moment. Ooh. So it's effectively, we could have just had it wake up at four o'clock each day and do it. But with, to try and anticipate um, it's one of the, okay. that, that, yeah, it's sort of constantly polling it. Okay, cool. Uh, I think David, we, I think do not have any questions. So, uh, thank you guys for joining. It was a wonderful session, David. Uh, the deck will be shared, uh, uh, soon and thanks for joining guys. Yeah. So if you have any question, you can directly connect with David. He, you're in, you're on LinkedIn, right, David? I am on LinkedIn. Yeah, yes, yeah. Welcome course. to share that. So just or you can <laughs> to find me. Of course. Um, although, yeah, I'm trying to think. I don't. Actually, yeah, I don't use Twitter much. So it's. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah. Otherwise, I'd say try and find me on Twitter. But yeah, I tend not of to course. look at it much. But yeah. Cool. Thank you, David. I think. Yeah. Thanks, David. Thanks, guys, for joining. Bye. Take Great. care. Stay safe. Thank you.